welcome back. Today I'm going to be talking about all of my favorite trends this autumn 2023 and just do a big breakdown on the street style I've been seeing on social media this past fashion month and all of the brewing trends that we're beginning to see and will just keep evolving throughout the year. I've been seeing all of these trends mixed and matched throughout a bunch of different style aesthetics so I wanted to use this video as a way to analyze them all within the many different ways that they can be styled. Because of the way that all of these little styling pieces and fashion items are being styled in so many different ways, I'm very inspired by this current fashion season. I think that the amount of creativity and variety I'm seeing every single day is amazing. I'm always pushed to make something better out of my own clothes just because of how incredible everything is right now. I don't know if that's just a me thing, but I'm just seeing tons and tons of different ways of styling things. I think people are more interested in maximalism this time around, so that's really contributing to the way that people are creating brand new things every day. I think people are using their own pieces and just styling them in very unique ways. They're altering their own pieces, painting them in different ways, accessorizing them in brand new aesthetics, and it's just amazing to see. So for this video, I'm going to group all of the little styling elements or fashion pieces that are very popular at the moment into nine trending styling aesthetics. I'm going to indicate throughout the video what I think people are wearing them as. So these nine different styling aesthetics I'm going to talk about throughout the video are bloke core slash sporty chic, office chic, utilitarian, indie sleaze slash rockstar girlfriend, layering, elevated basics, ballerina, preppy and maximalist accessorizing. So the first trend I'm going to be talking about is the color red. I first noticed that people were using red as intentionally as they are right now through a Vogue article where they analyzed street style and the styling of a pop of red. And then I've been seeing that a lot. So this TikTok, for example, is New Yorkers wearing a pop of red. It's so easy to make an outfit really exciting just with that little color because it's just the most striking color I would say. It's the one that stands out the most rather than complements and blends. So these are some of the photos that I've been seeing on social media whether it's just someone going all out adding as much red as possible and making their outfit super exciting or just styling tips I'm seeing and even small businesses are using this color to elevate either their stock or if they're a vintage seller or their own personal line and just create a more eye-catching factor into it. Like I love this dress from Shop Dirt. I think that having the, the red fading into the overall look of the dress is very... It catches the eye and then they start looking at the rest of the details. And these Mew Mew heels are super popular at the moment. I think it's very telling that a color is in when a certain item goes viral. Like these kitten heels I'm seeing everywhere. And the fact that they would choose such a daring color as red just proves that it's very big at the moment. I think red also fits in with the ballet aesthetic. I love the way people are using it in tights. I think that's like such an amazing color for tights cause just because it's like typically a hidden piece underneath. Not hidden, but just not the forefront. And having it be red is very just pulls you into the rest of it. I was seeing a lot of designers use little hints of the classic fire engine red, but I also noticed that in Gucci they used a very cherry red, and I'm thinking that this red that we've been seeing recently is evolving to a more deeper cherry red as the months get colder. This next one is very interesting to me because I've honestly been seeing a lot of creators talk about how this trend is leaving at the moment, and I've only just gotten onto it because I typically am always late to a sneaker or a street wear trend just because I'm a little bit afraid of going outside of like a chic silhouette but I just got excited about like the adidas sambas and gazelles they have just an amazing shape that's not like a box like the superstars I feel like they flow more with an outfit especially if you're wearing a pair of pants that's just very like loose it's very like slinky I feel like it complements just shape being more rounded and natural. I don't know if that makes sense, but yeah, I've been seeing creators talk about how they think this trend is just over because everyone's doing it now, but I've only just started seeing how I actually like it, so I don't know. Here are just some examples from Depop, just of all the amazing colors of them too. I didn't even realize that 
the pops of color is something I'm really enjoying. And being a shoe, you can let your outfit be pretty plain and chic and just have that little tiny pop of color. Like the dark blue and the orange is really nice to me because the dark blue makes it more subtle but then you have that little orange it's like oh that's cool. Here's some more ways that people are styling it. It's just so simple. I just feel like it works and I originally wasn't going to include of anything from Vogue Runway for this because I wasn't assuming that people would be styling with such a notable brand if they want their own brand to show but I did see this from 6397 all of their runway models were wearing Adidas Sambas and this this one is what is exciting me the absolute most right now because I just got a pair of these and I've been obsessed with how easy it is to kind of trick myself into believing that tracksuit pants can be dressed up and chic just with a blouse or a nice heel or a ballet flat I've never liked a sporty silhouette before I only go for something very structured. Streetwear to me kind of caps at jeans or corduroy pants. But the way that people have been styling track pants and specifically Adidas sweatpants as suit pants with a kitten heel, a ballet flat, or a nice blouse has been incredible to me. I've been seeing a lot, like so much, as soon as I opened up Pinterest in comparison to Instagram. So I think it's something that's kind of brewing. Um, it's more and more present by the day. But I think the fact that it's mostly seen on Pinterest means it's something that people are experimenting with and are going to start implementing more. I did see on Vogue Runway a couple of silhouettes that reminded me of this kind of juxtaposition between casual and elevated. So that also gives me the idea that it's just going to keep coming in. And I think with the cooler weather, people are going to find it more comfortable if they want to wear a skirt to put track pants underneath, which is also surprising to me because with the skirt over the pants trend, which I'm going to be talking about later, is that I expect the pants to have to be really, really specific and the perfect straight leg chic business pant. But it's so surprisingly easy. I wanted to show two different examples of how I'm styling my Adidas track pants because I'm loving the two silhouettes that I came up with with my own pieces. One of them was like the more just blouse pants heels and the other one had a skirt over pants. Oh my god. I keep remembering how excited I am about each of these next ones as I go through the video but I'm obsessed with the trend of wearing boxing boots as something more chic and just styled up. It's been kind of brewing for a while. I think I've been seeing it for about a year, but I'm only just starting to get really excited about it and really want a pair. My favorite are these Miss 60 ones. One of my favorite YouTubers, Susie Lola, wore it in this outfit and I'm just obsessed with them. I think the silhouette of these ones is just so amazing. I found another one on Depop that sold very quickly. Um, in black rather than pink and it's just the pointed toe the little tiny heel everything about them is just like oh my god very very elevated very chic rather than just boxing boots i also love these diesel ones a lot i love the colors and just the shape how it's not too intense or just big i think it's very slim and easy to flow with an outfit I think these go really well with just like an indie sleaze silhouette or just that sporty chic silhouette that's going around. I looked at Vogue Runway and I was totally expecting Molly Goddard um, just because they have a very feminine and chic like flowery aesthetic but also like a secretly like utilitarian like tough um, look to them. I also saw Knowles doing it and I expect that from London Fashion this year because they've been playing up the aesthetic that's very feminine but also very utilitarian and tough so boxing boots definitely work for this. This one is kitten heels and this is kind of self-explanatory just because everyone's been seeing these for a while but I'm starting to notice that with more and more push for creativity people are making different silhouettes out of them. It's also a pretty basic piece that people are playing with just with the lace, the numbers, the ribbons, the buckle. Speaking of the buckles, this Gani shoe is one that's really big at the moment. I think people are really into the buckles and the maximalism of it. Seeing a couple just with lace with like a shoelace over the top and I think that's just amazing. I really, really am dying for a pair like that. I also see a lot with the sporty silhouette, especially with the use of athletic numbers and lettering. Making these a very great way to mix different style aesthetics together because you have the very dainty, girly, 
not very ballerina, but you know what I mean. Just very dainty and soft and sweet. And you have the sporty or the tough or the utilitarian, and it plays them up together so well. That brings me into the boot version of it, where utilitarian kind of takes more of the forefront because it is more of a tough silhouette, even though it has that dainty stiletto and the pointed toe, having the leather boot and buckles makes it more intense. And this has been big for Fashion Week as well, especially with that girly and tough juxtaposition. I love this pair from All In just because it kind of is a boot, but it's unexpected because the length of it is made up of like a wrapped around ribbon type of buckle, which I thought was amazing because it does give me that like this is a big tough boot, but it's also just creative and what it plays with. It plays with a smaller shoe. I found these two from the Instagram account Taurus Souvenirs and just found these ribbons and just constructions of them, this like rope, the pearls hanging off, that's just so creative to me. I think that I'm obsessed with how many ways I'm seeing people recreate a silhouette that we've seen before into this like intense art project is what I want to say. I am really obsessed with the brand Knee High for this silhouette. I think it's the perfect way to modernize and bring out a new shoe with that classic, more timeless, more vintage silhouette. I feel like getting that from a new designer would stay in your collection forever. The next one is skirts or dresses over pants, which I have been seeing for a while, and honestly, people at the place that I work wear that in their uniform, which shows me that if they're going to wear it as their work pants, it's really something that is exciting people. I think that's a great way to turn someone's work uniform into something exciting. I think it's perfect for autumn because if people still want to be wearing their skirts, they now have a way of making it very warm and comfortable and cozy. I love the way that people are embracing the more layered and just not as form-fitting silhouette, just the cozy, big, oversized, comfy, just a big hug and something cute. These are styled really well with the kitten heels and the kitten kitten heel boots. I think that that brings out the chic from having this big frumpy sort of oversized look. I'm seeing it all over Vogue Runway from Anne de Meester's more frumpy and cozy kind of vibe to Sandy Liang making it more of a ballet, tight-fitting, form-fitting silhouette. It gives people a way to also make very, very short micro mini skirts very comfortable, whether or not you're putting it with a tight capri or a big pant that just makes it into a belt, sort of. I really like that idea and I want to play with that. Get like a really short skirt that acts more as a belt over top of a pair of pants. I love that idea. I love the way that Masha Popova's line came out as a very cargo, utilitarian aesthetic. And I think it works perfectly for that. Again, talking about London's utilitarian, girly juxtaposition that I'm really obsessed with. I've been seeing a lot of people wearing prescription glosses, even if it's not their own prescription or anything, or they don't have eye glosses. And I remember seeing this with the Ray-Ban in like 2012. I think it's coming back with the very thin rectangle silhouette that was popularized by a video game character, Bayonetta. I think this is very real in the office she kind of aesthetic. For me, I associate the office aesthetic with, and those glosses, those very like nerdy, businessy kind of work glosses, um, with a kind of robotic, doll-like character. For example, Miles Aldridge, the fashion photographer, took this photo for Vogue Italia. And you can just see that the model, while looking so done up like a doll, is just vacant in their mind. And his work typically presents models in this very robotic, like scary, almost doll-like, not human way. And I think that's the way that I see The Office, because it's very slinky. There is also a very chic, actually practical office wear trend going on at the moment, but I really like this very slinky, kind of possessed attitude that I'm seeing through this. This kind of secretly sinister or just liminal space that you have like in a character, if that makes sense. That brings me to the style choice that I would call slinky suiting, where I'm seeing office silhouettes paired with either t-shirts or just the pants are very low-waisted and they flow really nicely, but create more of a sexy silhouette rather than just oversized boxy office wear. I included some photos from Depop of items I found that make the office wear 
piece more interesting like this pair of shorts for example it's kind of like a bloomer the way it's all folded over is really interesting to me and i think that it's a way more sexy way of making a pair of suit pants into like hot pants or bloomers there's a lot of micro mini skirts that are using pockets buckles and belts and pleating in a very angular grid type of way like it's not very flowing and round it's just very straight if that makes sense um I think this is a great juxtaposition because it creates that very strong suit piece, but it's also a sexy piece as well. I've also seen this sheer top and the skirt that's layered with an extra layer of sheer underneath. Just creating more intrigue from the piece itself. Everyone's been really obsessed with Mark Gong from Shanghai Fashion Week, and it's so amazing how every single piece just makes just retransforms like office wear into this really sexy outfit. It inspires people to play with their own form-fitting pieces, tie them up, move them over, and make them into something that's flattering in a brand new way. I also loved Tanner Fletcher's collection, especially this piece where garter belts and lace just pop out in a perfectly covered suit. The suit itself is very flowy, especially in the pants. You can see they're very, they move with the wind, they're very slinky, except for the fact that they're very, very covered and it looks like without this lace and the garters it would just be a very modest like suit that you'd see in the office but with this lace popping through it's amazing i love that juxtaposition it's just the very business tough like to the point and then all of a sudden there's this like this girly element i've been seeing lots and lots of funky socks with heels this has been going on for a while i think one of the pioneers of this trend is clara aka tiny jewish girl um the way that she's always used bright colors and tights and everything in such a maximalist way has inspired others i think i think this is also really great if you have red tights like how i talked about in the beginning of the video i see on depop a lot vivian westwood and anna Sui tights just because vivian westwood always has plaid or other types of patterns that work really well with a nice kitten heel of a different color. I really want to get a better collection of interesting socks and tights just because it's a great way to elevate an outfit. I think this is a great way to tie in with indie sleeves because indie sleeves has a lot of different pieces going on together that seem to work. It's almost like everything's thrown together but in a very in a way that works. It ends up being very systematic even though it's very effortless and thrown together. I also see this in like a ballet aesthetic because people can wear these same tights with a ballet flat and bring together that element in street style. Otherwise, they're just a really great simple piece for layering and just being a bit more maximal with your outfits. Everyone's favorite elevated, elevated basic at the moment is the asymmetrical top. I think it's beautiful. I really want to get more of them because whether or not it's a jacket or an actual just top, the fact that it's asymmetrical enables it to highlight your torso in just a very nice way. I think it also complements whatever you're wearing as a skirt or pants underneath in a way that it's just hugging everything together. It can be as simple as a black top but still make an outfit really interesting to look at. Also with asymmetrical shirts, when they hang lower than the waistline, it makes them really good to play with the skirt or dress over pants silhouette because they act like this kind of dress but they're also a skirt so they're not really cutting off the waist in that way but they're enabling the pants to pop out of an extra shape over there. But also was really intrigued by Bottega Veneta's dress that looks like it has an asymmetrical top on top of it. But it is all together as this one dress. I'm seeing the way that brands are transforming the trend of ruching and elastic into this over-the-top sculptural canvas playground. These two in particular take all of these pinnings and elastic and ruching and make it into this giant sculpture. That's all I can say about that. But I really, really, really am looking to get my hands on more pieces with elastic ruching on the side just like that because it just makes something that could be a simple top or a simple t-shirt into something way more flattering. It plays with the symmetry, it plays with the form. This gives it a very nice opportunity to turn it into an elevated basic which then can play into a ballerina aesthetic because of the ruching can also be ribbon and elastic. Very big with that silhouette. It can also be indie sleeves because you're making a t-shirt more form-fitting so you can have that grungy t-shirt vibe but you can also make it more flattering and interesting. I'd also go so far as saying that it could be that slinky suiting kind of office sheet vibe where you can kind of do the same thing to a skirt. You can make it more 
asymmetrical or more like high in the front, low in the back. That brings me to another favorite elevated basic, the asymmetrical skirt. I want to start by talking about the small brand Belkey Studio based in Florida because one of their main mottos is easy to style, hard to miss just because it is a basic piece but the shape, the asymmetry, the ribbons and the elastic that they're using all bring it together into this brand new sculptural form that people aren't typically seeing when they look at a basic skirt. I think that's an amazing way to describe elevated basics because it's that perfect piece of clothing that isn't too much for a particular outfit but also is very interesting. I love how many possibilities there are for turning a skirt asymmetrical by folding it over, having a wrap skirt kind of silhouette, extra layers of the skirt, ruching in particular ways, the shape of it in general. I also see a skirt with a zip and just having it folded over. That's really interesting. I think that the possibilities are endless with this kind of thing. With people focusing more on the fundamental basic silhouette of classic timeless pieces, there is so much opportunity to add a little extra detail that makes it so much more fun. When you're really dialing it down to that foundation, you're there's more of a canvas to play with, and I think that's a big thing this this season. I want to talk about ballet flats now because just like what I said with the skirt being the foundational piece that is transformed over and over again, I'm seeing that the ballet flat is taking on different forms, shapes, interesting colors, and even going as far as becoming a sporty shoe. Like, this is so interesting that people can take this fundamental shape and turn it into something that transforms itself in so many different ways. I see indie outfits with this, I see sporty outfits, the mix of the two, the girly, the sporty together. The office, I think that in the office you can pretty much wear a nice ballet flat. It could have like a flat square toe, it could have a pointed toe, it could have sporty details because it's still that kind of chic shoe, but now you're adding something very interesting. And I think that it can be as maximalist and as minimalist as you want it to be. Next trend I want to talk about is ribbon, which definitely goes with ballerina aesthetic and maximalist aesthetic because people are finding so many brand new ways to put ribbon in their outfits. I've been seeing a lot of ribbon around angles of suit pants and things like that. It's also really interesting the way that high fashion brands are taking ribbon to a different level. For example, Helmet Lang was the first show that I saw come out this season and they have a very seat belt kind of ribbon happening in most of their looks. Which I think is really interesting because again, these high fashion brands are seeing a trend that we use straight up as just ribbon, but they're able to transform it into something new, something bigger. I've been seeing ribbons in a viral way on TikTok where people are buying a pack of ribbon shoelaces and replacing their regular shoelaces with ribbons. So I got a pack to put on my docks because the laces on those are hopeless. So I'm very excited to transform my pair of Doc Martens with these ribbons. I'm going to do that now. This is my finished product. I'm obsessed with them. I think that they're amazing. Also, the ribbon hides the fact that the Doc's shoe tongue is always super awkward. I also think it holds together better. Like, I'm hoping I never have to retie them just because of the zipper on the side, but I could not be happier. These look like they've just been made so new, so transformed. I'm obsessed with them. I'm seeing a lot of lace, which also enhances the ballerina indie sleaze kind of vibe, um, maximalism, oh, another way to do the funky socks. I really love the brands Knee High and Bella Venice for their lace pants that are very popular right now. People are pairing those with skirts over them and I think that's great because they're very sheer at the top which makes them not great for wearing on their own but the extra flow of them makes them amazing for not just like a tight under a skirt but just like pants under a skirt. They're a little bit more safe in this world. Instead of a full-on like cargo pant under skirt, which can be a bit intimidating, it's still like traditionally flattering. And it's also not as safe as just a tight or a um, lace stocking under a skirt. It's something a little bit more. I'm loving the way that tutus are becoming more popular at the moment because even though they're very maximalist, not very easy streetwear, street style kind of silhouette, people are making them into something interesting. 
There's a popular silhouette of tutus where it's very short and very bubbly instead of the whole tool flowing out kind of thing. And I think that's really flattering. It's also adding into the fact that bubbles and puffer is really in right now. I love the way that this designer used tutus because their their collection is very utilitarian and the tutu is very soft and tool and delicate and that's another one of these juxtapositions that I'm loving so much this season. All of these pieces are just a huge juxtaposition of each other and I love it so much. Like I would have never thought garter with utilitarian moto jacket and tool tutu. That's just so cool to me. And it works in a way that's just so effortless. Another big thing this season is the cargo skirt and I'm seeing very long midi skirts and maxi skirts and kind of cargo denim and canvas all together. Um, a big one that I've been really wanting to get so badly is the peachy den skirt with the very nice waistline. It like dips in in a really nice way. It's very chic but also very like tough. It's two things. It's like the way that it cuts in is very very beautiful and flattering but it's also that kind of tough utilitarian skirt. But it's also so interesting how utilitarian and skirt can be a thing. I'm seeing people pair these skirts with the kitten heels, the socks, just all these different aesthetics. It's like you're adding in like a little ballet element, like ribbons and stuff, with this very heavy cargo aesthetic. Like someone could literally have a moto jacket, a cargo skirt, and a bunch of dainty ribbons and socks and heels. So kind of adding into what I said about the tutus that are very bubbly, the bubble skirt or the bubble skirt dress is very popular right now and I think it's a very very unique silhouette that I haven't really seen before. Maybe I'm just not as informed with pre like very previous previous seasons, but I think this is so interesting. I love the shape of it. It's like a peplum without it being too peplum, you know what I mean? And of course the high fashion brands are playing into it in, in their own ways and it's so interesting to me. Like for example... We have this that's like totally made out of belts, but at the same time, it has that bubble element at the bottom. Um, and then another one that's like kind of made out of belts. And then we have this brand that does a full-on actual bubble, like plastic bubble. It's really funny to me. This ends up also being played with through the elastic ruching, like the asymmetry of it can be changed and made more bubbly and foldy through the ruching and ribbons and stuff like that. Again, playing into the utilitarian trend is the moto jacket, whether it's leather, whether it's denim, or whatever the heck this is, because I don't know what this is, but this is totally like a racing jacket, and it's interesting because I got this a few years ago thinking that I was not gonna like it. Like, I remember getting it a few years ago and I just got sick of it. I was like, eh, this is so... I got it during 2019. It was very... You know, it was like a very streetwear era. But it's perfect. The way that people are styling things now brings out a more timeless way of styling maximalist pieces like this. Like, 2019 was a very specific streetwear moment where Everyone was wearing crazy stuff like like workwear and they would literally go to like construction stores and buy like the neon stuff like that was the thing so I kind of associated it with that but seeing people wear moto jackets with kitten heels and tutus and things like that just makes me really really excited about this again and I'm excited to wear it. I would have never thought a few years ago that I could pair it with a pair of ballet flats or heels like never knew. I was only wearing it with like docks at the time. But yeah, absolutely obsessed with all of the shapes that, the shapes, the colors, the designs, the patterns, the different materials that are being used for these jackets. Something big at the moment is also the chunky belts. I'm especially obsessed with the way Mew Mew pairs short like leather hot pants with the double belts. I think that's really cool. Along with Mew Mew's bloomers that are hidden underneath. I love that so much and I wanna kind of recreate that in my own way. Paloma Wool's um, current line has a lot of giant belts that are just kind of sitting on top of a dress that doesn't have belt loops at all. Like, I think that people are really pushing the belts as like a low-waisted, no belt loop kind of thing. Also breaks up a jumpsuit that's just cotton or something like that. Totally allows it to just have more shape and it's not just like this giant like suit or whatever. Not suit, but like 
piece of fabric, you know what I mean? Like it brings it together into what it's supposed to be. I was very inspired by Burberry this season because their belts that were connected to their coats and dresses like really pushed down, really low, and I really, really am obsessed, obsessed with that dropped waist look. So a lot of my belts I kind of put down there just because of how amazing this silhouette that I'm constantly seeing is. Similarly to the kitten heel boots that I was talking about earlier with all the buckles, riding boots that are flat with all these buckles are very in right now. And this was like a beginning trend from Miu Miu that was then copied by Steve Madden. And all these brands are coming out with these buckle riding boots that are very flat. And I'm seeing a lot of like vintage, more slouchy silhouettes on Depop. Like for example, this Dolce & Gabbana one. I was... It's just perfect. Like I love how they can be flat and slouchy. Even some of them are dipping into the boxing boot kind of softness. That's another way I can describe that slouchiness. I've been seeing this for a while, but I'm seeing a lot of statement necklaces. Particularly a big puffy heart. And I think they're really cool. My mom actually makes a lot of statement necklaces of the similar size do um, using precious gemstones such as turquoise opal larimar moonstone spiny oyster and also sea glass i know that's not a stone at all but there's a lot of sea glass work oh and also antique pottery shards i think they're they're very cool because they allow for kind of a coquette aesthetic through this work as well and she sets them with very 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 intense and artisan metal working and soldering and things like that like i could walk into the basement and see her with like a blowtorch and stuff like that very intense process very very time consuming creations but amazing pieces in all different price ranges so i'm going to link her website in the description just in case of interest due to this silhouette of necklace being very very popular the next thing is i want to talk about the styling of watches but when they stacked like just over and over again. I think this is really cool. I've been seeing a lot of brands that sell watches actually like showcase all of their watches on one wrist but I've also seen a couple brands use watches in unique ways like for example the emerging brand 1x blue has bandeau tops and skirts that are just full of watches. I also tend to see watches styled on a pair of heels. Like Another very indie sleaze trend is the British flag. I see that all over the place. It kind of immediately transports me into that kind of punk London situation. Vivian Westwood, indie sleaze. The stylist and also YouTuber that I love, Chloe Philopolis, styled the look with um, British flag tights at one point, and I love that. It just adds to the whole like funky socks and heels kind of moment, but also brings in that like history of punk in London in the 70s, 80s, 90s, and like how it transformed in indie sleeves and all that. Chloe also dressed up for Halloween as Vivian Westwood and the boots that she wore had the British flag and the whole costume was amazing. One of my favorites ever. Uh, I'm actually going to show you my docs that I have that have the flag on it. Some of my favorite shoes in the world. Like I love, I love how it's just like leather sewn into it. The next thing that I wanted to talk about was the elevated puffer jacket. At the moment because of the ribbon trend and the ruching trend, I'm seeing people find different ways to add detail, asymmetry, cinching, things like that to puffer jackets. For example, the store My Mom Made It has a beautiful pink or white puffer jacket that has like beautiful ribbons on it and I think that's just so amazing how people are coming up with ways to make this typically, in my opinion, annoying piece to have to wear into something that we actually like. I don't know, I think streetwear fans are more into them than me because I feel like they ruin like the chicness of an outfit. Like I'd love it to be a perfect weather where I could just wear a wool coat, but now I'm finding ways to really enjoy a puffer and still feel like it's a chic and cute outfit. I recently got an elevated puffer jacket from the brand Meniere de Voix on Depop, so I'm going to show that. It's going to be a bit hard to show. I'm going to zip it up and see if that works. But I'm going to show it styled with the outfit that I showed earlier, where I wore the... <sighs> I had to catch my breath. <sighs> I wonder if I made anyone yawn. That'd be funny. I'm sleepy.
The next trend that I wanted to talk about are ties because I'm loving the way that people are not only just wearing ties in a preppy or office-y kind of way, but they're actually styling it into different pieces altogether. I've seen skirts made out of ties, shirts made out of ties, ties turned into belts, and they're a great way to um, up an outfit with like more accessories, more maximalism. I have two ties at the moment. This one is totally too long. Like, it just seems like there's something way too long about it. But I could just be wrong. Maybe I just don't know how to tie it yet. But I found this on the floor of the Bitter End in New York City. It was funny because the bartender was coming around to our table and to ask us what we wanted. And I was literally like, oh, I'm stealing this. Like picking it up the ground. I was like, oh, hello. Silly moment. But okay, this is an Anna Sui tie that I got off essence and it's just a necklace and i think the only way that i have styled this very long one is as a belt because i don't know how to tie it yet the next trend that i'm really liking i have nothing at all in because i always used to think it was like like kind of cheap looking kind of like mm, i don't know but this is chrome i think that it was brought to my attention in kind of the indie sleeves aesthetic through Susie Lola's video um, where she wore silver metallic shorts um, for like an indie sleeves themed birthday party and I was like huh like that makes sense that makes sense to me so now whenever I see chrome it's in a similar way where it's like a pop of chrome like how there's like a pop of red and I find it so interesting like when I'm at work and I like I'm seeing all the people coming in through the city I'm noticing chrome, like a little chrome bag, a chrome shoe, like something like that. Hello, I'm back just because I realized that I lost the footage of my outro, so this will be my outro. Anyway, I hope you enjoyed all of these trends I talked about today, and if you have any hot tastes of your own, trends that I didn't talk about, trends that I did that you didn't like or think are gone, let me know in the comments. And again, if you like this video, give me a like and subscribe and follow me on my social media. I have Instagram, TikTok, and Pinterest. Thank you so much for watching.